with the slew of ridiculously outstanding action games that have come out over the last several years, it's easy to forget about some of the classics from the last generation of gaming consoles. Of those stands Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. While you can't be blamed too much for letting this game slip from your memory a bit, especially in light of so many classics that have come since, still, Metal Gear Rising was an exceptional game that deserves your attention if you're one of the unfortunate few who hasn't tried it yet. The game in initially made headlines in gaming news as it was initially being developed by the Metal Gear creator himself, Hideo Kojima, back in 2009 under the title Metal Gear Solid Rising. However, as Kojima's team ran into issues with the swordplay, and Kojima's attention was mostly drawn towards wrapping up development on Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, the game ultimately hit a wall and was put on ice. Eventually, after a series of meetings and conversations between Kojima, Konami, and emerging action game superstar developer Platinum Games, the decision was made for Platinum to take over the project. Platinum would change the setting, redesign quite a bit of the combat, and ultimately make it more of a Platinum game than a Metal Gear game. Perhaps this shift in tone was for the best though, as many in Kojima's team thought that the sword combat of Raiden didn't fit well in a stealth action game anyway. In any case, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance was born, and it would launch into a world that generally enjoyed it. Most reviewers gave the game an above average score, lots of 7s, 8s, and 9s across the board and players largely agreed. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance might have had a mouthful of a title and might have rubbed some Metal Gear fans the wrong way, but ultimately it was an above average action game that showed how malleable and flexible the Metal Gear universe could be, while also showing off the skills of Platinum Games to pull off a flashy and fun action game. With all of this being said, you'd think a sequel would be on the way, right? Well, according to Platinum Games, it's not currently a thing. This is despite a giant number two in what appears to be the Metal Gear Rising font being included in a PlayStation 4 sizzle reel back in 2015. This too set the internet on fire for about 24 hours until Konami dumped a big bucket of water on it on Twitter, confirming that a new game was not teased in the video. So where does this leave fans of the original game? What does this mean for a potential sequel? Well, the long and short of it is, don't hold your breath yet. Shortly after the launch of Metal Gear Rising, Kojima-san had expressed interest in turning the one-time spin-off into its own series, seeing as the original was fairly popular, sold pretty well, and he just enjoyed working with Platinum. In fact, he went so far that the only way he would give a second game his blessing is if Platinum were the team to develop it, as Quote, nobody else could do it, unquote. This is interesting because it shows that a sequel was being kicked around in his head, enough to have that opinion, much less say it publicly. So surely one could surmise that the intent is there in one of the franchise's most pivotal figures' minds. The following year, Kojima got another chance to talk about this topic. At that time, he stated his idea for the Metal Gear Rising sequel to star Gray Fox and have him battle, quote, nanomachined powered zombies, unquote. As interesting as that is, he went on to add that he did offer to get the project going by writing the story himself, but Platinum Games at that time didn't express the same amount of interest, so it didn't move forward. This is even more proof of the intent to make a Metal Gear Rising 2. Not only does Kojima want to see a sequel made, but he went as far as to actively pursue it in the best possible way with Platinum. And that's not a sign of nothing. To fan the flames of speculation even more, another few months later in mid-2013, Konami posted a survey for Metal Gear Rising on their official site that clearly asked fans of the original game if they would like to see a sequel to Metal Gear Rising, and if so, to elaborate on what they would like to see in it. This is not uncommon when developers want to gauge interest in something, and it can be quite effective in doing so. Namco recently did something similar regarding their long-awaited Street Fighter Cross Tekken sequel that was promised many years ago, and received quite a bit of useful input on that. So it generally makes sense to do this if the intent is there on the part of the studio, but they just want to get a better idea of what the audience might think. Unfortunately, this survey would be the last official acknowledgement of anything related to Metal 
Metal Gear Rising, not counting the aforementioned number two that Konami officially discredited. These pushes by Kojima are interesting insights into the lifespan of the potentiality of a sequel, but there are two massive asterisks that need to be taken with it. The fact that they were all several years ago before Konami's shift in priorities away from expensive games, and obviously Konami's parting of ways with Hideo Kojima. These two things may very well mean that whatever intent there was to make Metal Gear Rising 2 either left with Kojima or were vaporized by Konami after he left. In either case, it's not looking good for a Metal Gear Rising sequel, even when it was at its most plausible, with Kojima expressing interest in it publicly, pitching ideas to Platinum, and putting out surveys for fans, it seems like the sheer desire to put it together just wasn't enough to get it off the ground and into production. As so often goes with endeavors entirely driven by passion, if the numbers behind it don't make enough sense, it's not likely to ever be. It's a real shame too, if you look at the story and the world that Metal Gear Rising set up, and all of the different directions that Platinum could take that combat system now, with everything they've learned from their recent games, the possibilities do seem nearly endless, but with the guy who seemed to want it the most no longer being in a position to have any sway over it, and the company that owns the IP not even being particularly interested in games right now, it's not looking good. That doesn't mean that we won't be dicing up Raiden's or Gray Fox's enemies ever again though. Things change, but as it stands, it likely means if we ever do get to take another stab at a game in that world, it'll be a good long while from now. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you'll be notified when new videos go up.